Good evening, Trinity. This is Jennifer coming to you for evening prayer on Thursday, January 21st. We're honoring the Saint Agnes, who was a martyr at Rome, and she died in the year 304. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh gracious light. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, our eyes behold the vesper light. We sing your praises, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O oh, Son of God, O oh, giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed today is a portion of Psalm 37, beginning with verse 19. The Lord cares for the lives of the godly, and their inheritance shall last forever. They shall not be ashamed in bad times, and in days of famine they shall have enough. As for the wicked, they shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord, like the glory of the meadows, shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous are generous in giving. Those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, but those who are cursed by him shall be destroyed. Our steps are directed by the Lord. He strengthens those in whose way he delights. If they stumble, they shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds them by the hand. I have been young, and now I am old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken, or the children begging bread. The righteous are always generous in their lending, and their children shall be a blessing. Turn from evil, and do good, and dwell in the land forever, for the Lord loves justice. He does not forsake his faithful ones. They shall be kept safe forever, but the offspring of the wicked shall be destroyed. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongues speak what is right. The law of their God is in their heart, and their footsteps shall not falter. The wicked spy on the righteous and seek occasion to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their hand, nor let them be found guilty when brought to trial. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way, and he will raise you up to possess the land, and when the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I have seen the wicked in their arrogance, flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by, and behold, they were not there. I searched for them, but they could not be found. Mark those who are honest, observe the upright, for there is a future for the peaceable. Transgressors shall be destroyed, one and all. The future of the wicked is cut off, but the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord will help them and rescue them. He will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because they seek refuge in him. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our lesson today continues from yesterday, from Mark chapter 4. He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under a bushel basket, or under the bed? And not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still, still more will be given to you. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said, the kingdom of God 
is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Song of Mary My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now about Agnes, our martyr. Substantially, the circumstances of her martyrdom are believed to be authentic, Though the legend cannot be proven true, and many details of the 5th century Acts of St. Agnes are open to criticism, a church was built over her tomb and her relics venerated. According to tradition, Agnes was a member of the Roman nobility, born in AD 291, and raised in an early Christian family. She suffered martyrdom at the age of 12 or 13 during the reign of Roman Emperor Diocletian, on January 21st, 304. A beautiful young girl from a wealthy family, Agnes had many suitors of high rank, and the young men, slighted by her resolute devotion to religious purity, submitted her name to the authorities as a follower of Christianity. The prefect Sempronius condemned Agnes to be dragged naked through the streets to a brothel. In one account, as she prayed, her hair grew and covered her body. It was also said that all of the men that attempted to rape her were immediately struck blind. The son of the prefect was struck dead, but revived after she prayed for him, causing her release. There commenced a trial from which Sopronius recused himself, allowing another figure to preside and sentence St. Agnes to death. She was led out and bound to a stake but the bundle of wood would not burn, or the flames parted away from her, whereupon the officer in charge of the troops drew his sword and beheaded her, or in some other text, stabbed her in the throat. It is also said that her blood poured to the stadium floor where other Christians soaked it up with cloths. Agnes was buried beside the Via Nomentana in Rome. A few days after her death, her foster sister, Emma Rantiana, was found praying by her tomb. She claimed to be the daughter of Agnes's wet nurse and was stoned to death after refusing to leave the place and reprimanding the pagans for killing her foster sister. Emma Rantiana was also later canonized. The daughter of Constantine I, Constantina, was said to have been cured of leprosy after praying at Agnes's tomb. She and Emerentiana appear in the scenes from the life of Agnes on the 14th century royal gold cup in the British Museum. An early account of Agnes's death stressing her young age, steadfastness, and virginity 
but not the legendary features of the tradition, is given by Ambrose. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of Agnes and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, you choose those whom the world deems powerless to put the powerful to shame. Grant us so to cherish the memory of your youthful martyr Agnes, that we may share her pure and steadfast faith in thee through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now for prayers of intercession, we remember the Harrison family who lost their mother, mother-in-law, grandmother Janice yesterday. We pray for comfort and peace for Jody, Chantress, and Arwen, and we pray for her soul. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.